What is up everybody? In this video today, we are gonna look at how Azure actually runs Node applications and the different ways that you can get it to start yours. Now, if you know me, you know I'm a huge fan of VS Code, so should be no surprise that's what I'll be doing today. And I'm using the app service extension for VS Code, which you can get from the VS Code extension gallery, and you should do that directly. Now, I've got an extremely simple Node app here, and it's really simple. Uh, actually, this is just me copying the code from the node getting started guide. I've got it deployed on Azure and it is running like a champ. And you can check out episode two if you want to see how I did this magical piece of coding simplicity. All right, let's upgrade this app a bit. And we're gonna do that by adding in the express web server package. But before we do that, I'm going to create a new branch here since this is a pretty big change and it's me. So I will probably mess this up pretty bad at some point. Okay, and let's install the express package from NPM. But before we can do that, we need to create a package.json file. So we'll run NPM init and answer all these questions that we don't know the answer to. I always hate this part. Listen, here's a little trick. Uh, Elijah Manor showed me that you can run npm init and then pass dash y, and then you don't have to answer any of these questions. It just creates the file, which is the way that it should have worked originally. All right, and now let's install Express. By the way, you can always just use i instead of typing out install if you're like me and you don't wanna type more than you absolutely have to. Okay, super. And let's change out the code in the index.js file to be a simple express server. And we're gonna actually return some HTML and index file like we're proper adults. All right, let's add an index.html file for express to return. And you can use the built-in Emmet support in VS Code and you can quickly scaffold out a whole HTML file just by typing an exclamation mark and then hit tab. And boom, there it is. And if you just tab down there, you can get down to the body. And let's create a title. Nifty, okay. And can't have a site without some lorem ipsum text. Another neat little Emmet trick is you can just type lorem and it'll give you some lorem ipsum text there. And you can type lorem times a number. It will give you that many lines of lorem ipsum text. Okay, now we're starting to get a lot of files in this project, so let's be organized here and move our index.js and index.html files into a source folder. And let's run it locally with node and then the path to our index file. Lovely. Doesn't it just feel good when things work the way they're supposed to? All right. Let's go ahead and deploy this from VS Code. And it tells us to check the output window for details. So I guess we should do that. Open up the bottom panel in VS Code with Command or Control and J. And select the Output tab and then get App Service there from the dropdown right there. And here we can watch App Service just sort of chug along and see what it's doing in the background. This is inside App Service's brain. And you can see that it's creating a zip file here in the background and then it uploads it. And then another thing you can see that it's doing here is it's zipping up the entire node modules folder and uploading that too. We don't want that. That folder is gonna get enormous as this app gets bigger and Azure is gonna run an NPM install anyway because it knows that this is a node project. So why don't we tell VS Code to please not upload our entire node modules folder? It's super inefficient. So to do that, go to the settings file here in the VS Code folder. The setting here for app service zip ignore pattern looks pretty promising. Uh, if we're not sure, we can just mouse over the setting and it will show us in a tooltip what that setting does. What does it say? Defines which files in the workspace to ignore. Looks good to me. All right, so let's add a pattern to ignore the node modules folder. Now, I don't know exactly how to write ignore patterns, but let me tell you what I do know. And that's how to copy this line here and then put it underneath and change this part to node modules. And I bet that works. Uh, now, one other item while we're in here, there's this dot deployment file. If you open that up, that file was created by VS Code when we first set up this project to deploy to Azure in episode two. 
And inside of that file is a setting which tells Azure to do our NPM install. Just FYI. Now let's do our deployment again. And let's open up the output panel and see what Azure is up to this time. Ah, okay, so it's deleting the node modules. Cool, cool. And this time we don't get that it's copying them over because we didn't upload them, which is nice. Instead, it's just gonna run the npm install, you know, the way that God intended. And let's check it out on Azure to make sure that it works. And wait a minute. What? This is the default page before you deploy anything. What in the heck is going on? Did I screw up or did Azure screw up? Well, first, let's make sure that our files are actually there because this page makes me feel like they're not there, even though I just put them there. So we can see this by going back to VS Code to the App Service extension, expanding our project, and then there's a files folder. And inside of that should be my files. And yep, there they are. They're definitely working. So this is really weird. I just had this working and I knew this was going to happen. I was prepared for this. Let's roll back by going back to the master branch and see if we can get our simple index file working again so that we know that it's us and not Azure. All right, we'll deploy this again just to make sure that I'm not losing my mind because I swear this did work before. And yep, okay, it works. All right, I'm officially confused. Let's go back to the Express project by switching branches and then deploying it. And we know that this doesn't work. So let's do really the only thing we can do, which is go to the log files and do some troubleshooting. We can get there from the app service extension. And we've got a few options in here. One of them is to connect to the log stream. Now the log stream will stream the contents of the log files right into VS Code. Another option is to just look at the files themselves. There's only one right now and it's got this date format in the front and then it says Docker. Why is there a Docker log in my project? I don't recall ever using Docker. Behind the scenes, App Service is running our app in a Docker container because that's just how App Service works. Everything is based on containers. You can bring your own container or you can do like we're doing, which is just deploy your files, but then those files get put in a container by Azure and that's where they run. Now we don't have any application logs yet and that's because they aren't on by default. If we right click the logs folder, we can select enable file logging and that will restart the app and enable the application logs. Super duper. Now click the refresh icon in the extension taskbar. And we have a second file. This file is the application log. Let's have a peek inside. All right, as we scroll down, we can see that Azure is reporting that it cannot find a startup command or an auto detected startup script. And that it's running the static default site. So I guess that explains why we're seeing the static default site. And then there's tons of ASCII art in here. What is all this? This is Azure. And then below that, it says PM2. Oh, what the heck is PM2? All right, let's Google it. Um, dum, da, dum, da, dum. All right, it's a node process manager. It must be baked into our container behind the scenes by Azure because we sure as heck didn't put that there. All right, so Azure can't start our site, but it could start it when we had just an index file. So just to see if this works, let's go back and move our index file to the root and see if that works. So we'll move our index on our HTML and redeploy. And, and boom, okay, that works. So Azure follows a convention here. If you don't tell it how to start your app, it just tries to guess. It throws up a Hail Mary and says, well, maybe it's index.js, server.js, main.js, app.js. It will even look for bin slash www, which is the starting point for express apps if you scaffold them from the express CLI. So basically, it's just blindly stabbing in the dark trying to start your application. But because our index file wasn't in the root, it doesn't know how to start it. 
So what we really should do is inform Azure about how to start this site. And we could do that by adding a startup script to our package.json file. So let's put those files back in the source folder and then let's add a startup script. And we'll change our index.html so that we are sure that our change has been picked up. And let's deploy that. Lots of deploying today. Okay, that works. Azure can now start our site no matter how we structure it or what we name our files. All right, now let's talk about PM2 for a second here because the fact that Azure is using that is kind of important. Let me show you why. When you're running a node application, you run the risk that it could crash because you have an unhandled error or, you know, you wrote some bad code, it happens. Now, we can make this happen pretty easily in this project. Let's add another route here that tries to read a file that doesn't exist into a stream. Now, if you visit the site in the browser, everything looks all hunky-dory, like it's just fine. But if you go to slash read and execute that bad line of code, explosions. Yep, that doesn't work. And here's the really bad part. If you go back to the root URL, that one's not working anymore either. This whole app is dead in the water. Have a look in the VS Code terminal and you'll see that node is crashed and this app is down for everyone. That is not good. PM2 and other node process managers will just watch this node process, and if it dies, they will resurrect it, bring it back to life automatically. And PM2 is installed from NPM just like any other node package, just with NPM install. And PM2 works off the concept of configuration files. So we could create one of those by running PM2 init and then specify our startup point in that file. But uh, I already got a startup point, it's in my package.json, kind of like to keep it there. So instead, let's just tell PM2 to read our startup script by running PM2 start. And then the process we want to start is NPM. And then we've got this weird syntax that you would never guess, but it's dash dash space start. And that will run our NPM start command. And you can see in the table there that PM2 is running our process, complete with CPU usage, how much memory it's taken up. Now our app is running and it's called NPM and that's because that's the process that PM2 executed. And if we wanna see the logs from our app, we can run PM2 logs and then pass in zero, which is the ID, or we could pass in the name, which is NPM. And our app is still running on port 3000. And if we go to the read endpoint to crash it, it will come down in a fiery ball. But, but, but this time, go back to VS Code and you can see that the app did crash, but then PM2 just restarted it for us. So it's back up and running. So if we go back to the root of our app, look, it's still up. It's not down for everybody. So Azure is using PM2 as well. And if we deploy this site to Azure, broken as it is, our app won't crash and stay down. Azure will use PM2 to make sure that it recovers. And that, my friends, it's a very nice feature. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please check out the other Azure casts and I will see you again soon.